and this is your quick start guide to homeschooling. I've got seven steps for you to follow, simple steps to start homeschooling. Now I wanna make a quick distinction between homeschooling and public school at home. They are two different things. While there are a lot of similarities because one, your children are being educated at home and two, you as the parent are doing maybe a lot of the teaching or maybe just facilitating the instruction, but you are a lot more involved than you were maybe when your kid was in a public school or a private school. So a lot of similarities between homeschooling and public school at home, but I want to clarify that they are very different. And so I'm gonna be doing a separate video on the differences between homeschooling and public school at home that will be coming out pretty soon so I will leave it down in the description once it comes out. But this is your quick start guide to homeschooling, so let's jump in and get started. Number one, you need to determine how to homeschool legally where you live. And there is one absolutely amazing place where anyone can go find out how to homeschool where they live, not only here in the United States, but around the world. And that place is HSLDA. HSLDA, which stands for Homeschool Legal Defense Association, is a wonderful resource for homeschool families around the world. They are there to help defend us if we are members. They're there to help us to know how to homeschool and they have amazing resources for their members. But you don't have to be a member to find out how to homeschool legally in your state. You can go to their website and look at their map of the US, click on your state and they're gonna have all the different options for you. They also have an international page as well. I will leave links to all of those down in the description of this video. But homeschooling is legal here in the United States in all 50 of the states, but the regulations and requirements for homeschooling vary greatly from state to state. From some states having very little regulation for homeschooling, which if you're new to homeschooling, that is a good thing. We wanna be in charge of our children's education not the government, not anyone else. There are other states who have very high regulation, but you can still homeschool there. So you're gonna to wanna to check out HSLDA to find out how to legally homeschool where you live, whether that's here in the United States or somewhere around the world. Number two, you need to choose homeschool curriculum. Once you've figured out how to homeschool legally where you live, it's time to purchase curriculum. Now there's a couple things that you're gonna to wanna to think about when it comes to purchasing curriculum. I do wanna let you know that I have a great resource on my website at JanelleKnutson.com. I have a homeschool curriculum page with lots of curriculum reviews, information on how to choose curriculum, where you can buy curriculum, all that kind of stuff. I will leave that link down below. But here are a couple things to consider when you're choosing curriculum. So first you wanna research and determine what your educational approach or method is to education. Yes, there is a lot of different approaches to how children can be educated from the traditional method to classical education to Charlotte Mason and oh my goodness, the list goes on and on. So you wanna figure out what you think is gonna be best for your child, for your family, and then pick curriculum accordingly. Maybe you're gonna land on just one approach to education. Maybe you're like me and you're gonna get a little eclectic and you're gonna like one approach for one subject and another approach for another. It is really fun and exciting to be able to choose curriculum for what we think is best for our, each, for our individual children. So think about, research, and determine what educational approach you think is best for your unique family. You also wanna become a student of your student or a student of your child. You wanna be studying them to learn how they learn best. And then you can go ahead and pick curriculum that maybe works better with your child's learning styles and the things that they're interested in. Um, there again is so many different options for curriculum that it can sometimes seem overwhelming, but it's also a great blessing to us as homeschool parents because we can really cater the uh, educational experience of our children to their unique interests, their learning abilities, um, and, and, and so much more. So be a student of your child. Learn how they learn best. And this is gonna take time. This is something that you're going to learn over maybe 
this first year of homeschooling, maybe the next year of homeschooling, and you're gonna adjust the curriculum and all that kind of stuff, that's okay, that's good, that's the way homeschooling works, but become a student of your child. Learn how they learn. Finally, when it comes to choosing curriculum, you wanna figure out how you teach best. Are you someone who enjoys lesson planning and thinking of creative ways to add in fun to the lessons? Or do you want more of an open and go approach? So think about how you teach best. Are you someone who maybe isn't very, um, you don't feel very confident in math, so that's maybe something that you wanna look for curriculum where someone else is giving the math instruction, but you absolutely love literature and that's something that you wanna be able to teach on your own. So think about how you teach best and make sure that you're getting curriculum that's going to work for you as the mom. Because here's the thing, if you can't implement it, then it does nobody any good. No matter how great the curriculum is, if you can't implement it into your home, then you're either gonna do one of two things. You're gonna be frustrated and overwhelmed and burnt out and wanna give up on homeschooling because you can't implement this curriculum and you're trying and you're trying and you're just getting frustrated. Or, on the other hand, you might be, the curriculum might be so hard to implement that it sits on a shelf and you rarely ever get to it, which doesn't do you or your kids any good either. So make sure that you're thinking about yourself as well when it comes to the curriculum, thinking about what can you actually teach and what can you implement in your home. The third thing you need to do is to plan your school year. So when you're planning your school year, first think about whether you want to follow the traditional school schedule, which you know starts maybe in August or September and ends in May or June, or do you want to homeschool year round where you're doing school all year round but taking a lot of breaks throughout the year? So think about what you think would be work best for your family. The other thing that you want to consider is when you want to end the school year. So do you want to end by the end of May, the end of June? Do you want to end in um, your schooling year round and so you're going to end maybe in July and start back up in the beginning of August? When do you want to end this coming school year? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna plan your school year backwards. You're gonna start at the end date and work backwards. I have a whole video on this and how to do this, so I'll leave it linked down below. But just really quickly, you have your end date, you think about how many days of school you wanna get in, and you count backwards to where you need to start. But you need to also fill in where um, you wanna take breaks. Um, holidays that you're gonna take off. And so as you're counting backwards, you're gonna skip over those holidays and those breaks that you're gonna take. That's gonna get you to when you need to start your school year. So plan your year. Like I said, I got a video on how to do that. I will leave that link down below. Number four, plan your week. You've got your year planned now. Now it's time to break it down a little bit, smaller chunks, and plan your week. Some homeschool families like to school just four days a week. Other homeschool families want to school five days a week. So think about what you want to do. Some families do every single subject every single day. A little bit of spelling and math and science and history and literature. They cover a little bit of it all every single day. That's kind of what we're traditionally used to. But you could also change it up you could do more of a block schedule. Maybe you do math and spelling every single day of the week, but Monday and Wednesday, you those are the two days you dive down deep into history and you spend a good chunk of time doing your history curriculum. Maybe Tuesday and Thursday, good chunk of time doing your science. Maybe Friday, in addition to that math and spelling, you're gonna do art. Somewhere in there, you're gonna block in some time for literature and English, all of those things you're going to get accomplished this you're going to accomplish the same amount of work but you're doing it in blocks so you're just tackling a few subjects each day but you're doing more of it in that day versus doing a little bit every single day so think about how you want to do your week these are just a few of the many ideas remember homeschooling is all about figuring out what works best for your family and for your kids so you might decide that you want to do a block schedule and then realize, you know what? My kids would prefer to get every subject, tackle every subject every single day. You can switch. You can change in the middle of the year if you want to. But start thinking about how you think your week might work best for you, but be okay and willing to change it if it's not working. 
Step number five is to create routines for your day. So you planned your year, we've broken it down and you've planned out your week. Now we're going to figure out a routine for each day. Not each day differently, but what is gonna be the general routine for each of your homeschool days? Um, I like to say that schedules are best for school and routines are best for home. Now, that's not to say that a strict schedule is not gonna work in your homeschool. There have been many seasons in my um, journey of homeschooling that we've had to do very strict schedules where we're putting time chunks to things. And that was just what worked best for us in that season. But for the most part and for most homeschool families, a routine works better. A routine is just a flow to your day. So you're not setting time to it, you know, you're not saying that math is from 9 to uh, 10 o'clock or 9 to 9.50. You're most, what you're saying instead is, you know what, we're going to get up, we're going to get ready, we're going to do our chores, and then we're going to start school. And we're going to do school maybe for a couple hours, and we're going to try to tackle these subjects. And then when we're getting exhausted and we're getting hungry, we'll take a little break for snack, maybe go outside and play a little bit. We'll come back and we'll do a little bit more school, maybe try to tackle these subjects then we'll break for lunch. Then maybe after lunch, we're going to have some quiet reading time, something like that. So you don't have um, strict times to your day, but everybody knows that there's a flow and routine to each homeschool day. So they know what to expect. They know I need to get up, I need to get ready to do school, and they have some hope. I know at some point, mom's gonna say, break time and we're gonna get to have snack or we're gonna get to go outside and play. So think of a routine that's gonna work for your family for your school days. Keep in mind that you do not have to start school in the morning. You can do school in the afternoon. Maybe it's better for you to do school starting late afternoon and finishing it up after dinner. Maybe that just works better because you're working from home or you're a working parent and so you need to juggle homeschooling and work life as well. Again, this is the benefit of homeschooling figuring out what is going to work best for your family and being able to educate your kids within those um, kind of parameters that are gonna work best for you. I'm popping on real quick in the middle of this video because I realized that I forgot a step when I was recording. So we are going to squeeze it in right here. No worries. So after you have planned your homeschool year, you have planned what your weeks are gonna look like, you have figured out a routine for your homeschool days, the next step is to organize your materials. That means you're gonna organize the supplies that you have, your curriculum, and how are you gonna organize your records and your record keeping system. Now I've got you covered here because I have a whole playlist on YouTube all about homeschool organization and homeschool record keeping. I will leave that linked down below. Now on to the next step. Step number six is super, super simple. This is it, get started, that's it. You have determined how to homeschool legally in your where you live. You have chosen curriculum. You have planned your homeschool year. You have planned your homeschool week. You have figured out a routine for your homeschool days. Now it is time to just get started. I know it seems overwhelming. I know it seems scary, but you have to just get started because it is as you are homeschooling that you're gonna determine and be able to figure out what works and doesn't work for your family. You're gonna be able to determine what changes you need to make. I wanna tell you just a quick little story here, super short story. When I started homeschooling, I, gave, I told myself, this is so overwhelming, I'm gonna give myself a year to figure it out and then we'll jump in and then we'll you know get started. Well, that whole year, I created this whole homeschool life and routine and schedule and perfect curriculum. But when we got started, I realized none of that worked for me, for my child, for our family. So you can do all the planning you want up front, and that's a good thing, but know that it might not work and you're not gonna figure that out until you actually get started. So step number six, just get started, which leads right into step number seven, which is reevaluate and make changes throughout the year. Like I said earlier, you're gonna learn 
through the process of homeschooling what works and doesn't work for your family. You can research all you want, but until you get your boots on the floor and you start doing it, that's when you will realize what's gonna work and what doesn't work. So take a little step back throughout the school year, reevaluate and make changes. And if something works for you perfectly one year, just know that it might not work perfectly the next year because we have different seasons in our life. And so sometimes we have to change things up a bit. So just know that part of homeschooling includes reevaluating and changing, making changes when needed. That's it. That is the quick start guide to homeschooling. I know you can do this. I know you're probably feeling overwhelmed, but you can do this. If you have questions, you can leave them down in the comments below. And I wanna let you know if you're feeling overwhelmed and you still feel like you need some extra help, number one, check out some of the resources that I have listed down below in the description of this video. But number two, I do offer one-on-one -on -one homeschool consultations via phone and email. You can find out more about that at JanelleKnutson.com forward slash consulting.